Today, our subject will be China's very first nuclear ballistic missile submarine, the Type 092, known to NATO as the Sha class. During the Cold War, the most efficient platform for nuclear deterrence was widely understood to be nuclear-powered ballistic missile submarines, or shortly SSBN. They can stay submerged for several months on end and carry enough nuclear weapons to lay waste to any countries within range. They can strike from angles often unexpected, potentially bypassing missile defense systems. In July 1958, the Communist Party of China officially approved the development of nuclear propulsion and ballistic missiles. Beijing's reason for developing a ballistic missile submarine was twofold. Number one was to enhance the assurance of an effective retaliation using a minimal amount of nuclear warheads that would nevertheless cripple any aggressor, thereby deterring them from contemplating a nuclear strike in the first place. Number two was to experiment with things like design and doctrine for SSBN, in the process improving the performance of future ballistic missile submarines. Indeed, it is probably the second reason that's proved to be the underlying factor. Only a single boat is confirmed to have been built, with fairly limited range for ballistic missiles. Compared with the locations of the key industrial centers of the major adversaries, and it spends basically its entire career in Chinese territorial waters. Several steps ensured the Type 092 was feasible. First, the construction of a nuclear submarine plant at Huludao, 190 kilometers northeast of Beijing. Second, the construction of the first Chinese land-based nuclear reactor in 1965. Third, the experience gained in building the Type 091 Han class nuclear attack submarine by the team led by Huang Xunhua between 1970 and 1977. Logically, the next design step started alongside the Type 091. Design work started around 1975 to 76 by the same team. The focus immediately shifted to an extended version of the Type 091 for accommodating ballistic missile tubes. Essentially, half of the work was done already. The rest revolving around the fitting of a new section containing ballistic missile tubes for underwater launch. In fact, only 15% of new fittings and systems were needed. Between 1976 and 1977, the country was in the grip of the Cultural Revolution, which brought much chaos for the country's scientific and military engineering programs. The country's nuclear submarine program is likely to have been affected. The chief designer of these vessels, Huang Xunhua. At one point, was sentenced to raising pigs. He even received a death sentence later on, but this was commuted with the direct intervention of Premier Zhao Enlai. Another difficulty was the Sino-Soviet split in the early 1960s, leading to the halt of major Soviet assistance. In the context of these circumstances. The successful completion of the Type 092 and indeed the Type 091 attack submarine was actually pretty damn impressive. The one and only Type 092 boat, hull number 406, was laid down in 1978 at the Bohai Shipyard, Huludao. U.S. intelligence was aware of the construction thanks to satellite surveillance. In 1981, China launched the Type 092 SSBN, despite all the challenges involved in the process. The Type 092 is the first ballistic missile submarine designed and built in Asia, several decades before the Simpo class of North Korea and India's Arahant submarine. The final submarine displaces around 8,000 tons submerged. 
and 6,500 tons well surfaced. Length is 120 meters with a beam of 10 meters. Complements is 100 personnel. The teardrop shape of the Type 091 was adopted, but with a 22 meter raised section installed behind the conning tower to accommodate 12 ballistic missile tubes. Each silo housed a JL-1 ballistic missile, and later the JL-1A. The Type 092 uses a pressurized water nuclear reactor, larger than the one used on the Type 091. The reactor produced somewhere between 58 to 90 megawatts, varying according to different sources. Steam from the reactor fed two steam turbines. Both turbines were mated via a system of gears to a single shaft. The steam turbines powered a single, four-bladed propeller. Maximum speed is 20 knots surfaced and 22 knots underwater, lower than the comparable Type 091. Reportedly, the reactor needs to be refueled every seven years. Let's talk about the nuclear missiles carried on board. Initially, the O-92 was armed with the JR-1 submarine-launched ballistic missile. The name JR-1 is shorthand for Ju Lang Yi, which literally translates to Huge Wave 1. It was the first Chinese underwater ballistic missile, with research and developments going way back to 1967. Production started in 1982. The JL-1 weighs 14,700 kilograms, measures 10.7 meters in length and 1.4 meters in diameter. The nuclear warhead had a blast yield of 250 to 500 kilotons, approximately 15 to 30 times the World War II bomb dropped on Hiroshima. The rocket's propellant is solid fuel. The JL-1 has a fairly small range of 1,770 kilometers. Although the upgraded version, the JL-1A, increased the range to 2,500 kilometers. Guidance system is inertial, allowing an accuracy of 600 meters circular error probability. The first launch on land was made in 1981 the first underwater launch from a modified diesel submarine in October 1982, and the first launch by the Type 092 SSBN in September 1987. By the way, if you enjoyed our video so far, please press the like button. The main problem with the JL-1 missiles is the small range. It can of course cover the small distance necessary to hit the nearby countries in the Pacific, in terms of their key industrial and population centers. But these countries are not nuclear powers. For deterrence to be relevant, it needs to be exercised against other nuclear powers, the US and the Soviet Union. For the O-92 to actually hit American cities, it needs to be close to the North American coast. For the O-92 to strike Western Soviet Union, it needs to be in the Baltic Sea or Barents Sea in the Arctic Ocean, where it will of course be vulnerable to Soviet anti-submarine warfare assets. In fact, the O-92 cannot hit even India from the South China Sea. The introduction of the longer range JL-1A increased the reach of the O-92 to some extent, but the fundamental problem remains. The self-defense of the Type O-92 are the six 533mm torpedo tubes, all located in the bow section, same as on the Type O-91. The torpedoes are the U-4B and the U-3, both of these are active passive acoustic homing torpedoes, propelled by an electrical silver zinc battery. The U-4B is derived from the Russian SAET-50 passive acoustic homing torpedo, although incorporating active guidance. The U-3, on the other hand, is the first torpedo developed indigenously.
The Type 092, as a first-generation nuclear submarine, was inevitably quite noisy compared to the US and Russian nuclear submarines of the period. Reportedly, there were also issues surrounding the reliability of its nuclear reactors. At this stage, Chinese engineering has been unable to reduce the noise level of the nuclear reactors, and struggled with hydrodynamic flow, and the technology for the propeller was nowhere near the level of the elder powers. Consequently, the noise level of the O92 was assessed at 165 decibels on average, a very high level. For comparison, a Soviet Delta III class is around 130 decibels, while the improved Akula class attack submarine is 110. Because of high noise level, the Type 092 was unsuitable for open ocean deployment and as an instrument of nuclear deterrence. High noise level and the short range of the weapons make difficult the proposition of taking the O-92 into firing position in a wartime situation. According to NATO, the Type O-92 has very rarely gone on a standard strategic patrol outside Chinese regional waters. A single long-range patrol was made in Chinese territorial waters, but the submarine spent most of its time by the pier side. Her main function appears to be the firing of the JR-1 ballistic missiles to ensure the weapons function as intended. In conclusion, the Type 092 was a testbed, a prototype allowing the test of new underwater technologies and paving the way for the development of the second generation Chinese SSBN the Type 094 and later the O94A. The Type 094 eventually reached construction and completion stage. The Type 092 ensured the successful development of China's underwater ballistic missile and nuclear propulsion. So in a way, it's made a major contribution to the country's undersea deterrence to a degree often underappreciated. After all, one must walk before they can run. The status of the single Type 092 is currently unknown, although most Chinese commentators believe it is no longer active. If you like to learn more about the progress of China's underwater nuclear missiles, please check out this video on the JL-3 submarine-launched ballistic missile which the Pentagon claimed to be fielded already on the Type 094 SSBN.